Hey guys, this is Brian from srgfx.com. I'm going to take you through a little basic walkthrough of how I do tires. They're really not that hard once you figure it out, like the basic understanding of how I build them. Uh, and also, I really don't, unless it's a super unique tire, I build my tires all the same, the same kind of way. So it don't matter if one kind of looks a little bit different than the other. You'll notice in mine, all my tires are drawn pretty much the same. So anyway, let's get into it here. Okay. So what I think the main thing is, is right off the bat, you want to get this outer rim ellipse figured out. And then once you get that figured out, all the rest of it kind of just falls right in place. So I just grab my ellipse tool, which most programs, you know, that I know of have an ellipse tool. So you can do this in any, any of your favorite programs. You just take a minute, get it nice. And there we go. I like that. What I like to do is on this outer rim portion in the illustrator, I do like a two point stroke. Now, I do use a consistent point stroke and all that, and it's because I have my uh, uh, artboards set up in a way every time that I do an illustration. And hopefully by the end of this year, Ray and I will have an illustration course I go over in detail from start to finish how I draw a car. From like prepping the image if it needs prep, setting up my, uh, my artboard, and all that jazz. So when I say a two point here, I, I generally stick to a three point, two point, one point and a, and a half a point because I notice half a point doesn't really show up or should I say underneath, beneath, below half a point doesn't show up very well in the end product the way I do it. So anyway, enough rambling. I've got my outer rim ellipse set. So now it's basically a matter of visualizing, you know, the angle of this tire or axle or whatever, and use that as your axis point for when you're enlarging these ellipses and building up the tire and stuff like that. But I mean, I don't worry about that. I just, I've done these so many times that it's, I, I could build tires without a photograph, you know, whatever. But if you need to kind of visualize it, just think of that line and you're going to try to follow your ellipses along it to build these tires up. So what I like to do is do the actual rubber part, the tire first before I do the rim. I don't know why, just the way I do it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste these ellipses are all going to go behind this rim part i'm going to start layering them <clears throat> behind so i copied and pasted my first ellipse now if you notice when i'm doing this i'm not even the ellipse degree or or, or i don't know what you want to call it does not change it's just the size of the ellipse that i'm playing with so really yeah, it's it's really simple. And what I do is now all these lines are going to start at 0.5. Just because I really don't want these lines to be prominent. Just enough that I could see when I'm coloring my wheel. Okay, again, copy and paste in that shape behind again. This is going to be, this part will be the, the kind of like the, the lip that sees the light from the tire. So the li light's coming down here. You'll have your highlight and your color. Okay, now copy, paste behind. Now we're going to always recreate, uh, create what I call is like the flat area of the tire, which that's kind of where the lettering goes, stuff like that. So when I color that, that portion of it's going to be black. And I like to color it black because when you put the, the lettering on it, it's not competing with all the shading, if that makes any sense. Okay, once you get that, copy and paste behind. We're going to do this upper part of the tire now as you can see you'll see a little bit of that of this part of the tire too as well 
and this is kind of where the light will hit up top of the tire. And what I like to do is once I get it just a little bit outside of that other one, I'll nudge this over just a hair. Okay, now I'm going to create what I put in here is like this little flat lip. Again, right on the outer rim ridge of the rubber tire there. So copy and paste that. Again, using the same lips. I'm not changing its width or anything like that. Just keeping it at that angle, you know, degree, whatever you would call it. Okay, so now you can see I've got that kind of facing part of the rubber part. Good. So now I'm going to create this, the tread part. And again, that's just a matter of dragging and copying these ellipses. So what I'm going to do is just kind of see where that edge is. Kind of see the angle of the tire. All right. That should always be in the best. So there you go. Now we're going to do this part. I start off at the top here with my pen tool. And I just create like a, a rounded top. I don't want to keep it flat. You want to round it because like when a tire is spinning really fast, it bubbles up like that. And then once you get down here, you just keep it flat. Just keep it flat because obviously that's on the that's on the ground. So then what I want to do is take this outer front facing rubber area. I want to copy that. But not paste it yet. Just copy that shape. And I'm going to take that shape and weld it with the two back shapes. Okay, and it gives me that. And then I'll repaste that shape right in front of that. So there you go. You have that. Okay. Now I like to create a two-point outside line on tires. Okay. You can see it's really taking shape now. Now what I'm going to do is take this ellipse. One of these ellipses doesn't matter. It can resi resize them anyway. And I'm just going to drop in some tread lines. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to snip, snip off the excess. Okay. And I like to Put my tread at one point and I'll put about four or five depending on the width of the tire I try to keep perspective in mind I, if I go back a little bit I'll keep them a little bit closer together keep the front ones a little farther apart I mean it's really up to you how much you want to get detailed in your stuff Split that right in half. Trim off the excess. Usually on that last one, oh, I have some excess to cut off. But there you go. Check that out. It's a tire. Not that hard. And again, once you do it like that all the time, no matter what angle, you could draw these tires all day with no freaking photo. Anyway, okay, now we're going to the rim area. I just do a quick look of what I'm looking here for. The contours of this rim, you know, stuff like that, so I know where to go. Okay, now I'm going to take that front main shape that we started this whole thing with, and that's now I'm going to paste in front, and I'm going to build up the rim with the same ellipse shape. Okay, so I'm going to, we're starting off this little outer lip of the rim, and what I what I like to do here is put this down to like, 0.5. Now I noticed that when you do start to get smaller or in the rim area, you may have to make some minor adjustments. Like you can see it's a little, you know, way thicker than I want like that. So you just got to make a little minor adjustment. No biggie. Okay, now I'm going to go into this other part of the rim. Again, I'm just using 0.5s right now for my, you know, 
uh, finer areas and edges. Okay, then we're going to do, it, it kind of goes, curves back in here. And what I like to do for corners, like inside corners, that's where I use my thicker line. If you hear some snoring and slobbering going on, I trust you. Uh, trust me, that's not me. That's my dog. <laughs> He's my work buddy. He sits by me every time, all the time. Okay, we're going to create this little hole in the rim here. A lot of times this won't catch up right in the middle, Oopsie. which is fine. You can always move that if you want. That's a point five, and I just got to make this little boop. <laughs> Check it out. There it is. There's a tire. That's basically how I do my tires. And then I'll show you how I color it real simple next. Let's color this bad boy. All right. So basically, I got my prep line art. Uh, again, Ray and I should you know, hopefully have a course by the end of the year or so and how I go about in a more detail of how I get my line art, you know, prepped before I even start coloring, etc. So, yeah, like that. I like to, before I do any coloring, and this is, does not pertain to just tires, whatever, just anything in general, I like to get my line art done. Like make it like a coloring book so then all I got to do is come in and color. I don't have to bother about drawing and coloring at the same time. I don't think that's very efficient, if you ask me. Anyhow, okay, here's my line art that I have. So I'm going to start coloring. So what I like to do is grab my whole image. Again, this doesn't just pertain to the tire. This is just when I'm starting to color, this is what I do. I grab the whole kit and caboodle and turn it like a dark gray. I don't know. It's just something I've done. I learned years ago from someone, and it's really, you could see areas you may have missed or something like that. It just makes it easier, if you ask me. Anyhow, here we go. Uh, so what I do, again, I start coloring the rubber part before I get into the rim, so... I created this first ellipse. That's just the eye color that in black. And I work my way outwards now. Of course, you can see, you know, keep in mind, you know, where your light is hitting on these tires to, you know, do your shading correctly. But right now it's just a matter of doing some straight gradients from gray to black to kind of give me that basic shape. Okay, here's that flat part I mentioned when I was drawing. I color that black. Okay, here's another area where the light's going to be coming down and hitting the top of that tire. So again. And sometimes too on this, if you want, I like to create like a, a little uh, reflected light off the ground if you want to start getting really technical with the colorings. You could do that as well. Okay. Now this next part is kind of like a, I could go either way with it. You can color this very last little lip black like that. Or I just start, you know, I give it a little dirt color. Now I'm going to take the tread here on top and I'm going to weld those all together. Give it a dirt color and there we go, just flat dirt. Okay, now what I like to do is put a gradient on this tire from dirt color all the way to black at the bottom and adjust however you feel necessary. And I want to, I got to make, make this gradient in a way that I can give it a little highlight right here. Now that's as far as I like to take my highlights. I've noticed other people that they like to put white in there. I'm not a fan of it, but on some cars it looks cool. If it's done right, it looks cool. 
I don't like to put hardly any in there at all. I just think a tire should be shiny. I don't know. That's just me. All right. We did that. Now I'm going to apply that same gradient to this outer lip. Now I like to do on these, this outer gradient of the tire. I like to put the dirt color in where the gray is. Because I would think some dirt gets up on that part too. So like that. Adjust my gradient and such because I don't want very much showing up down there. Okay. Now you could stop there if you wanted to. You could do all kind of things. Which I don't do. I like to. You can make. Hold on. You can make your, you know, you can make highlights on this if you want. Turn, turn your lines black if you want like that. Which can kind of look cool. I'm fine with it. But I don't do that. I just stick with this. Because, you know, in, in the overall t-shirt design, I'm not looking at a tire. Sorry, I'm just, I'm worried about other things. So I don't spend a whole lot of time on my tires, which I understand details and I do put details in, but you got to think of it too is I'm in a business. The faster I get to my next car, the more money I'm going to make. So <laughs> that's all I'm going to say about that. Now I have uh, like stippling type assets that I could use to help color this car. I don't like to use gradients a whole, whole, whole lot, but I'm a vector based artist. So I like to use vector pieces as much as I can. So on the tires, I'm going to use this like grainy type fade. It just kind of gives the, the tire a little bit more grit, you know, like it's not so smooth. Like that. Sometimes you can stick, you know, one like this to do the highlight of the tire, but I think this tire is fine without it. Really fine. I may sometimes just come up here and do one up top, but it's only for the actual base dirt color. I also want to mention, I don't power clip or clip room mask hardly anything because it just makes it you know, more compatible with a lot more products. Uh, that's all. But, it, you know, the preference is up to you what eventually you're going to do with your art and stuff like that. Like, obviously, mine is to resell it, make sure it's compatible with everybody and, you know, stuff like that. So you can kind of see now the tire has a little bit of grit to it, you know. I could have did that on the side too. Sometimes I do, but I'm not going to right here. Okay, now that's pretty much it. That's all I do for tires. Now if it's, sometimes I put a shadow here up, up top, you know, because you obviously have a body and stuff. If you wanted to put a little detail shadow there, you can. You can. Okay, let's get to this. Okay, starting from this outer lip. And I'm going to color green that outer lip. And I'm going to keep it green so you kind of see what I'm going to do here. I like to take that outer lip and I'll copy and paste one on top. Like just a little bit on the inside of it. Like that. Because what it's going to do is when I color this, just color it back to show you. See, it creates like this lip around the outer edge so like if i didn't do that and i just colored that black see like you lost your rim <laughs> it looks weird so i like to you know create little rim lights and stuff when it's black on black just so it you know you can see it okay now what i'm gonna do is go get my pen tool and we're gonna color this rim so you know, I'm like old school. I don't look at pictures when I'm coloring cars. I just get use the car photo for the basic 
shape in areas that I need to pay attention to, like the curves and the surface changes, you know, contours and stuff. So when I come in here, I use your basic, uh, what do you want to call it? A shadows and reflections kind of thing. So what I do, as I made this little thing here for you guys, you can kind of see the picture up top is just like a normal horizon. And you can see, like, if you look at my illustrations, why I do the lines that I do, I have like a stylized horizon line. And I just follow the contours if I have to. You know, your horizon line obviously is going to be where the, you know, the edges of stuff, to where it curves around and all that. So it's basically, I'm going to call this rim. I, in rims, I don't get so, so technical as like I do on the bodies and stuff. But that gives you a general idea of how I just do my coloring. I just base it off basic, you know, horizon thing. <laughs> and I always color everything in black and white. I find it easier to define my shapes and forms in black and white. Then after I'm done, then I can just go back in when it's all done and just color and apply graphics, etc. cetera. So, so going to go back into my tire and normally my horizon line really depends on where the body part is like on a car body pretend this circle here is a car body i'll put it up probably in the upper third of that shape because it's it, it just it looks better there but then as you got like the the window it's higher up so your your horizon line is going to be a little lower technically, you know. But on rims, I like to put my horizon line just straight through the center. It just looks good just to put it straight through the center. So, and in order for me, instead of just making it go straight across, I like to keep my lines organic, you know, like different thicknesses and stuff like that. Which that's another thing I think is key is your line quality like how where you're putting your lines and, and how many and what thickness and stuff like that and i'll go over all that and hopefully by the end of the year or you may see little snippets come out here and there anyhow i want to make this like a big wide sweeping curve kind of thing when i'm doing these reflections my horizon lines and then, like i said instead of keeping them straight i'll you know Play with just making them a little organic and crazy. Another key thing we join observe, always looking at things. I'm always looking at chrome or, you know, just the way things reflect off each other. I know I'm a nerd. But I like drawing. I love drawing. Okay, there's that. And now I'm going to start shading in these areas depending on where the light's hitting because you know like this is a flat surface so this would be the ground area sky area this is getting you'll see sky down here this is a flat area so you'll see the ground here you know like that's all real super technical stuff it's just how i like to color things but i mean you don't have to get that super technical just as long as it looks good i mean make it look good if you think it looks good Because all you're doing when you're coloring cars, you're not trying to create a realistic vehicle. If I was trying to make it realistic, I would just use the photograph, right? That's what I, you know, it just uh, bothers me. People try to get things. I know that's their thing. They like it. But, like, don't you want to throw some artistic flair into it? Like, your style or creativity in there? That's just my thoughts.
Okay, I'm going to outline this shape. You can see. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start coming in here, selecting that shape, and these each individual shapes now to just intersect. You'll see. So as I'm coming down here, so I make sure I know I did the intersection on that piece. I'm just going to color it like, okay, brown, so I know I did that one. and Intersect that, and that'll be, I know sky gets reflected in, in certain areas. Just so I know, just so I know I did it. And I come back and go, oh, man. looking looks like I got everything there I'm gonna lose this a little bit I'll delete that Boop. so basically okay now if you come back up to my this thing in my bobber you can see I shade from like a black to gray it's just black to gray and it's a 70% black is all it is there's these are the only colors I use when coloring this little thingy here it goes from 100 percent to 70 percent 40 percent 20 percent and 10 percent i mean that's solid white because if you go anything in between those it's just going to get mushed all together anyway so you want to keep that contrast for the the print in the end you know you're better likely to keep these values instead of the ones in between, because they'll just get lost. So I found over my years by just coloring in 70, 40, and 20% of each color, you'll be fine. You'll see all your differences in tone, contrast. So anyhow, I'm gonna start coloring all my areas from like, that are the ground area, which I mean this up here, from a dark black to gray. And then once I get into the sky reflected areas, I go from 40% to black. And all these other little lines are just details. You could put like some cloud reflections, you know, more ground. It's just ground details and stuff. And you don't have to go that far if you don't want to. But again, that's just, that's just how I do it. So there, see, I'll do that. So I adjust it where I like. Now all the areas that I know are flat and reflecting the ground. I can go ahead and change that. Now these areas that are pointing straight down, instead of making it black like that so that you lose it, I'll go kind of the opposite way like that. So you can still kind of see the separation. And I, but this one under here, with the one that are facing down up underneath, like up there, I'll just color that black. Okay, now for these sky areas, like I said, I go from a 40%, and I just go up to a solid black. That's all I do. And it just, just adjust as necessary. Don't change your color here. Just adjust it as necessary if you got to pull your gradient back and forth to kind of get where it's at. Then I just copy and paste and I like it. Let's see, I told you I lied. I just lied. Now that don't look good. Sometimes it does. So I'm just gonna put a gradient like that. Cause I like to see some of that. So you can see the, the, the contours, surface changes, whatever, all that stuff. on this this one here you can really color this with your light source reflecting like that but see again you're not seeing that upper lip so i like again this is just artistic interpretation i go that way with a 40 percent black which i'm gonna let one here there and i do it i know the sky and that's get reflected here so that's a a 40% to black there. And 
now I just kind of go back and look and make adjustments where necessary. So like this, I, I don't know, so I'm not liking it now. I might just flip that around. It all depends. Sometimes I'm in a, a goofy mood. And color this all black like that. See, that looks much better already. Oh, don't forget your little little hole here. Kind of throw the gradient in there. Kind of do that. There you go. There's kind of that so far. This is where you can add detail if you want. If you want to add more reflections. Kind of really tighten up the design a little bit more. Or keep it simple. But I like to tighten it up a little bit. Not as much as the ones on the body. some one more crazy little thing to tie it together a little bit get no just being organic with my line I can do some like I showed you in that last picture some sky reflections if I want But I don't do a whole lot of this because when it comes to the tires, I'm just. I don't think it's uh, you know, extremely necessary per se. Now I'm just putting a nice little highlight here. And, and like that, that's not really accurate technically, but it looks cool, doesn't it? That looks cool. And then, you know, I'll put maybe a reflection here. Like I said, it might not be absolutely accurate, but hey, it might be there to break up some areas. Sometimes I get, you know, I put little <coughs> hot spots in these areas. Just feel, you know, sometimes I feel like putting detail into a design. I mean, that's pretty much it, you know. And they say you want to adjust colors. I'll go in and adjust this to a 70, you know, percent of I think that looks too bright there. So, there. That looks pretty cool. I'll change these down a little bit. So, 70%. That looks cool right there. So, now, again, I have assets for, like, lettering on tires. And I have these assets here where I look like whether the wheel's spinning, you know, forward or to the, this way or they're going that way. I have them for everything. But I just try to keep them where you don't read the line because it's like they're spinning, right? So 
unless your sponsor wants them to be read because sometimes you run into that then you'll put the actual tire name on it but i just i've been doing it this way forever I have again for dirt and hot spots. I don't put hot spots on my cars a whole lot, but I'll just pop one on there. I like this one per se. This is cool, but this one will print a little bit better. So I go with that one. I just pop them on places where I. Think would make a cool little hot spot. Okay. And I usually put one or two on the horizon line. Then I got these little pieces of dirt. I just start stacking them on there. I don't mean they're in the front or back. But if I guess you're from Photoshop, you can probably have brushes made for this kind of thing. But again, like I said, I'm, I'm vector based, so I just. I tend to overdo it a little bit with the dirt. When I first started out, a lot of it looked like mud. And I'm just, I like this because, you know, they, they tend to print better than a lot of, well, I know this is going to print pretty good. So I think I'm getting too out of control. Okay, anyway. There you go. There's the tire. That's how I do it. Usually not doesn't even take that long. I just, because I was explaining everything. But so. Take it for what it's worth and maybe some of that will help you. Maybe not. Um. Please subscribe to the SRGFX. We got a lot of cool things coming and you'll like it. All right.